what I want to talk about today is character descriptions and how a character description actually leads to the reader or the audiences if you're doing like a visual medium obviously how the character just simply appears how that leads to the audience's attitudes about that character so the fact that the character has physical features physical features are not irrelevant unless you take a completely i don't know like postmodern approach to writing and that's probably not going to be the case for most people you're going to choose character traits to make people think certain things about the characters if you're doing this correctly so one of the best examples that i can think of is baron harkonnen from the dune novels and you can also think about this in the dune movies in fact i think it's good to compare the books to the movies and compare the movies with each other to uh, kind of get what i'm talking about here baron harkonnen is a physically disgusting character he looks uh, awful. Uh, he's obese. He has like a uh, these suspenders that levitate him because his girth is so great. So he's horribly obese, which uh, signals to the audience that he's hedonistic, right? He he eats uh, nonstop. He's a glutton. He really is a glutton. Um, but he's obese. He's covered in boils. Uh, one of the things I love is in the David Lynch version of Dune, you have a doctor like sucking the pus out of his boils. And um, it's just a great image. The, the Harkonnen from the Lynch movies is so much more wicked and disgusting than the Harkonnen from the newer um, Denis Villeneuve um, version of the Dune. It's much more effective. So the physiognomy of the character, the physical arrangement of the character determines a lot of the traits of the character and what people pick up on that. The truth is, people judge books by their covers and they judge people by their appearances. Whether it's a book that has a cover, they judge it by the cover, or it's a person who has a physical arrangement, they're going to judge that person based on their physical arrangement. So as a writer, the physical arrangement of a character is going to matter a lot to the audience's interpretation of whether that character is good, bad, a, a villain, a hero, or someone likable or someone unlikable. Now, Baron Harkonnen is obese, but is a character being fat, does that automatically make him unlikable? No, it all depends on context. Baron Harkonnen, the attention is drawn to his girth and his disgusting fat uh, to make the audience disgusted with him, and it's done in a way that highlights his horrible hedonism. You also get in his head, and you find out like he's a pedophile and uh, he's just an absolutely detestable human being. Um, truly a villain, like uh, Frank Herbert really doesn't pull any punches. He makes this guy the dastardliest, most wicked character you can imagine. He's got every vice. Um, so evil characters are afflicted with vices. They are gluttons, they're, uh, they're full of wrath. You know, they, they have all of these, you know, think of the seven deadly sins, that's really seven vices. Um, villains are gonna have those a lot. But if you have a, a jolly innkeeper whose belly like hangs over his belt um, and who has big rosy cheeks, you're not going to think of him as an evil character. Chances are you're going to think of him as a rather good character. And this is because the context of how physical traits are presented to a reader or to a viewer in a visual media, in visual media matters to how we interpret those physical traits and how, what we're gonna think about the character. So, you know, if you see Butterbur come bumbling up with his big belly and his, you know, his beard and his jolly attitude, you're not gonna think he's a villain or he's bad. In fact, you're probably gonna think better of the fat innkeeper because he makes a lot of good food, obviously, because he's eating it a lot, right? Just like how you don't think bad of a fat hobbit who enjoys eating, it's because, well, the food is good. That means that he's a good cook. He knows how to procure some good, uh, some good victuals. Um, that's why he uh, has a bit too much fat. So the way that that physical, not a maybe we call it a flaw, the way that that is presented has a lot to do with how um, how the audience is going to interpret that physical arrangement. Likewise, you can describe the same facial um, same facial arrangement in a couple of different ways. If I say <clears throat> he had a lean and gaunt appearance with a sharp hook-like nose and keen eyes that 
we're always scanning his environment. You're like, hmm, that, that maybe he's a crafty kind of character. I wonder about him. But if I say he had a rat-like face, you're going to immediately think he's a bad character. You're going to think, oh, this guy's like a cunning little. He's like a rat. You know, he's going to be a uh, he's going to be a, a little conniving character. So the way that you describe what's basically the same features. If I say rat-like face, and if I say like, and I do all those other descriptions, um, you're going to think that this character is going to be villainous somehow. <clears throat> if I say he's a character who's who's naturally thin and his eyes were keen, you know, that could also be describing the same thing, but we're not going to necessarily think he's a bad character as a result of that. But we're going to start assuming some things about the character regardless. Why am I drawing attention to his his sharp or you know hook-like nose or eagle-like nose, something like that? Why am I drawing attention to his small, keen eyes? which are like a rat. So why am I drawing attention to his lean, gaunt face? Those are all physical traits that let the audience know what they need to think about the character. So character descriptions really matter. One of the things that you'll notice, say, if you're reading something like romance, is that you're never going to have a hero who is not described in some sort of physically masculine and attractive way. You're not going to have the main character, the, the main character will have to at best, you know, kind of, the main character is usually the female and I think of the hero, it tends to be the male who like rescues her, that's a really common romance trope. But anyway, the uh, the main female character is at best going to have to just to decide between two different forms of beauty. Is he like the lean uh, swimmer-like body or is he like the chiseled bodybuilder, like which one? Which one am I going to pick? And usually traits are going to go with that. So if you have a guy who's a lean swimmer, he's going to be maybe more suave and debonair. The guy who's like a chiseled bodybuilder is going to be more directly masculine. He's going to be the guy who, rather than being very subtle, he's going to be very like uh, forthright. And those are both qualities that can have different levels of attraction. Um, you know, you, you can be attracted to someone who's subtle. You can be attracted to someone who's direct. You can be attracted to uh, beauty that's demure. You can be attracted to beauty which is provocative. It just depends on the context and um, all those sorts of things. But you, you'll notice that the character traits are going to go with the character type. So the more subtle character is going to have a more subtle physique. And the more brutish character is going to have a more brutish physique. And the ugly character is going to have an ugly physique. The mean and cruel character will have ugly physical features that coincide with that. This has been done in, in fiction going back for a very, very, very long time indeed. And uh, certainly with prose fiction, it's been a staple for hundreds of years at this point. So use it. And you have to think about how your character descriptions are really, what they're really communicating about the character to your audience. Obviously, if you want a character to be beautiful, you're gonna describe what her beautiful traits are. If you want a character who's less beautiful but maybe has some other qualities, you're going to point out the flaws. So you might say that the character is a little soft or round or, or chubby or something like that, which means that uh, you know maybe if that character is a love interest, they have to present something that's a much more attractive than their physical arrangement. That could be a good story as well there, right? Um, so what are the... The tropes you'll notice as you read books is that the, the female lead is described as beautiful because we like beautiful people and we want to imagine someone beautiful and you want the protagonist to end up with a beautiful woman or vice versa, you want the a female protagonist to end up with the, the handsome man. Um, readers like that. They're interested in what's attractive. What you're probably not going to see a lot of uh, unless the author is directly is doing it for direct reasons, is having a character who is physically deformed or physically deficient. You're in kind of the anti-hero territory if you do that. A lot of people think of anti-heroes now as being like Batman. He's like a vigilante and you know he's kind of mean to bad guys, but otherwise he's he's not, a, you know, he's kind of bad. He's like the Punisher. Now, I, I, I'm thinking more like Thomas Covenant. So if you haven't read Chronicles of, uh, of Thomas Covenant, I've talked about it on the channel. They're very interesting fantasy books. They're not for everyone, and indeed, I think most people would be put off, especially by the first, uh, the first beginning of the first book, where he ends up raping a girl. Right? This is uh, an event that uh, that happens, and it's <clears throat> an event which kind of has these major consequences in what's going on because he doesn't accept the reality of what he's presented being presented with. 
Um, and that kind of flows from that. But anyway, Thomas Covenant is a leper, literally a leper. He has leprosy and he's shunned by his community because he has leprosy. He's missing a uh, part of his hand because it got injured and got gangrene and had to be you know, cut off. So he's missing part of his hand. Um, you know, he is not, he's never described as being physically attractive. He's always hunched over and acting like a leper. And he has personality traits, which are very off-putting. He's, he's, a, he's a petty and angry character who doesn't want to help other people and wants to wallow in his own misery. So he's a real anti-hero in that he doesn't have the normal traits that you'd write for a hero. Um, now, Stephen R. Donaldson, he, he does Thomas Covenant that way for a good reason. Uh, it's not because he wants you to like Thomas Covenant. In fact, Thomas Covenant is intended to be very dislikable. But because Thomas Covenant's relationship with the fantasy world and with himself is what is the focus of the story. And that's where the interesting conflicts really start to arise. Um, so Thomas Covenant really shouldn't be attractive and he shouldn't be likable and he shouldn't be someone that you immediately want to succeed because that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is to do the opposite of that. It's to make a, Tom, make a character that's dislikable, that's not likable, that's um, really not wanting to be a hero and you don't really care about him being the hero either. Uh, but either way, the physical traits of the character really matter. So think about that when you're giving a character description. A character who's very, you know, brutish and strong will probably be very brutish. Um, I think one example that comes to mind since I, I just did a video on Fritz, uh, Fritz Leiber the other week. Uh, so Fritz Leiber wrote Fawford and the Grey Mouse are these um, series of stories about these two roguish characters. And Fawford is one who... He is specifically drawn to contrast. He's very tall, but he's not particularly robust. And Prince Leiber talks about that. He's got a more of a thin appearance, but he's still very strong and very tall. He's a tall barbarian. He also has a higher voice because he's a trained bard, like he's been trained to sing and things like that. So he has a higher, clearer voice, which contrasts with his very kind of impressive physical arrangement where he's very, very tall. Um, and then there's the contrast with the gray mouse, or mouses tends to be much smaller, more rat-like. He's called the mouser, and he acts a bit like a rat or a mouse, you know? So their physical arrangement matters, but one of the things that Fritz Leiber draws attention to is the contrast. Is like, um, you know, Fawford is very tall and would be brutish, except he's got this high voice and these other subtle things about him which make him more of a thief-like rogue character and not like, you know, Conan, the barbarian kind of big, strong warrior. Though Conan acts as a thief plenty of times as well, I should point out. So uh, anyway, guys, I thought I'd give you that little lecture before we like, get to playing some games. Hope you guys are having a good one. Good to see Sergeant Slim Jim here. I did a, I recorded a little podcast with him this week, so that will be up on his channel. So you can hop over to his channel and subscribe. Um, I think it's safe to say that everyone who read Dune enjoyed hating the Baron. Yeah, he's a character who's supposed to be like, you know, you hate him. There's even a point where he thinks about his nephew and he thinks about the nephew's beauty. He's like sexually attracted to him. Yeah, every time you get a, a moment with the Baron, he reveals something else that's more vicious and evil. He's not merely an antagonist. He's not some sort of neutral, um, you know, Machiavellian antagonist. This guy's evil. <clears throat> and his physical arrangement goes to that. If he sounds like a snake, it's a mistake. So whatever you draw attention to, his S's were prolonged like he was some sort of snake. And you're gonna think, hmm, there's something off about this guy. Probably wouldn't talk about your main character's pronunciation of S's. You, people would just default and think he talks like a normal guy or they'd imagine his deep, resounding voice, you know. So anyway, <clears throat> let's go ahead and play a little bit. 